My name is Brian Dawson and in this presentation I will be talking about transitions. For the question on transitions, this was divided into two sub-questions, 24A and 24B. For the purpose of this presentation, I will be firstly considering question 24B. The key question for 24B was, what are the views and experiences of people with an eating disorder, their carers and healthcare providers on transitions between services? There were five studies that met criteria for inclusion within the evidence. Four of these studies were by the same pool of researchers. The final study was the only study conducted in the UK, as well as being the only study that involved parents. When reviewing the evidence for this question, Four areas of change that would improve transition were common throughout, albeit that different suggestions were made by different papers. The recommendations that were made were ongoing pa parental involvement, support from and for them within changing role, a needed change away from transition time being dictated by age of 18 a need for more autonomy with collaborative involvement in care and better communication with and information provision concerning adult services. This now brings me to question 24A, which is what are the main requirements for ensuring effective and safe transition between services for people with eating disorders? You probably noticed that within Question 24b, that all, all the studies focused on transfer between paediatric to adult services. There were actually no studies identified uh, for eating disorders for changing between health board areas. Uh, for this question, there was, there was one study that met criteria. This was a scoping review of transitions. Uh, within mental health services rather than specifically eating disorders. It took place across nine countries. 12 of the 33 studies that were looked at in the review were from the UK and three were eating disorder specific. There was one study within the review that was UK and eating disorder specific. The methods that were used within this, the the studies within the scoping review included qualitative interviews, focus groups, survey questionnaire and case note reviews. Models and protocols were uh, also considered within the, the scoping review. When there was no structure, it was found that a high percentage of the participants reported the serious emotional disturbance and that there were lower rates of use of mental health services between the age of 18 to 25 in comparison to 16 to 17. Transitions, if there was no structure, were also said to be poorly planned and poorly executed. The study did identify two models for transition. These were uh, improving pathways between current child and adult services and developing new integrated adolescent services. Both of these models were said to have benefits and costs, although both have common commitment to consider the developmental needs of the age range as a key component of care. When considering the recommendations, uh, the Eating Disorders Faculty of the Royal College of Psychiatry's report uh, was also considered. And as you can see from the, the recommendations, they're very similar to those made by patients, parents and service providers. Uh, it's also important to note that these recommendations also fit with the Scottish Government's protocol for transition from CAMS to adult services. Finally, the recommendations themselves. I hope that you can see that we have considered the views and recommendations of patients, carers and service providers available within the evidence base, as well as the recommendations made by the Faculty of Eating Disorders within the Royal College of Psychiatry and the Scottic, Scottish Government's protocols for transitions from adolescent to adult services. Thank you for listening.